Hey guys, how's it going? Capran here. Today I'm going to review a card that is a little bit overdue. It is a GVG card, and yes, I know Blackrock Mountain uh, came out a bit more recently, but uh, understandably it takes a while to really understand some cards, and uh, at this point, I'm actually still understanding a lot of the GVG cards. So one of them, the one we're going to go over today, is the Whirling Zapomatic, and it seems like um, a very you know, very simple card. It seems like there's not much to it, but it was really today in an arena run that I uh, really understood how to use this card, and it was mostly inspired by the fact that when I've been playing arena in the last couple of weeks, I've been doing extraordinarily well, actually, um, but I've been playing much more of a tempo game, and I have really understood the usefulness of this card from playing this way. So, okay, let's, let's get down to the basics. Um, get some stuff out of the way. Yeah, this card, Mr. Zappy Zappy, Mr. Wee, yeah, he's pretty good in Constructed. People are playing this guy in a lot of the Shaman decks and they are wildly successful as we've seen even in recent ladder tournaments, even in actual just real tournaments. Um, this card has very strong interactions in Constructed because one part of the card that's shared is if you get this guy early and well, he goes unchallenged, or if you combo him with other cards that basically allow him to stick for one turn on the board, you just do a shitload of damage. And the way the constructed Shaman deck works is you play a lot of mechs, you play this guy, you go all in for tempo with this guy, and then maybe you go all in for tempo with the Fell Reaver. And uh, it tends to work because there are strong interactions between cards that allow this card to stick. So this card by itself dies to everything. So the idea is you play him with stuff that makes it hard to get rid of. In the constructed deck, sometimes you open up with a mech warper, and if they don't kill the mech warper, well, it's okay to play the world in Zapomatic. Uh, and if you do so, you'll probably win. Um, there's also strong interactions with um, Anoyatron. If you play Anoyatron and Whirling Zapomatic, a lot of classes uh, often don't have much removal through taunts. Usually all classes have like one, sometimes two, rarely more than that removal uh, for like spell early game creatures at that stage in the game. So you can usually sneak away with a crap load of damage. And uh, it also has very strong interaction with the Power Mace. The Power Mace is very effective in Constructed. Uh, you play it and then you do like a turn four, uh, drop Whirling Zapomatic, use the, the weapon charge, buff your Whirling Zapomatic, and even at that point you might just drop a Neutron as well. It basically becomes a, a ridiculous creature to deal with. So it's kind of like a very temporary push for tempoed damage. And uh, there's a lot of like advanced play that goes into this, even though the interaction seems simple, to where obviously the card is really good because in Constructed, that is the main win condition. Do too much damage all at once so your opponent can't deal with all the crap you play. And the thing is, in Arena, it's very difficult to do that. This card combos very well with buff cards like, you know, Flame Tongue Totem, like, you know, Rockbiter, of course, but you don't always get that. Um, when you compare it to the cards that has strong interaction and constructed, you're not consistently going to get this card and a Mech Warper in your Shaman deck. You're quite rarely going to get a Power Mace and this card in your Shaman deck. And uh, Anoyatron, for instance, is just not a very good card. So um, in Arena, you have to play this guy in a very unique way that makes him ridiculously strong. And if you don't, he's basically kind of crappy. He's rated, I believe, average in terms of arena rankings as a result because most of the time uh, when you play him, he's just a 3-2 creature and the Wind Fury doesn't really matter because he's going to get his ass killed the turn, uh, the turn on your opponent's turn right after you play him. So he's not going to get an attack off. And uh, if he does, often it's into a taunt creature. So that doesn't work too well. And it's because in Arena, the theme has changed to where there's a lot of tempo-oriented stuff. So people are playing way more one drops, way more two drops. And the very specific scenarios where you can actually get that attack in will often win you the tempo-ish, the tempo push for damage type of game. And it's just, you have to know how to set it up. So I figured that out recently. So how do you set it up? Um, the most basic way to set up a Whirling Zapomatic is 
If you go second and your opponent doesn't have a one drop, you just slam down Whirling Zapomatic. Uh, it would basically require your opponent to have a spell removal for two mana cost, and often that's not really very good to keep. And it might seem weird, but in Arena, often your opponent won't coin out a two drop. So you really need a two drop creature to just slam down. And because of that, it's actually fairly rare that people have two drop spell removal. And if you can get this guy to stick uh, on basically turn one by coining him out, you can push for sometimes six damage, but sometimes a lot more. And if you do, you're basically gonna steal wins, okay? And that is very important. Um, the other side where he's um, quite useful is a lot of creatures in the late game become fairly useless because they're very easy to kill and Whirling Zapomatic fits perfectly into this category. Um, and the way that you make use of them is by saving them up. You, you try to save them up, you try to extend the value game through like toteming every turn, saturating most of your mana as much as you can, but just staying in there. And when you combo cards like Whirling Zapomatic, maybe with another Whirling Zapomatic, or just, you know, high priority targets, maybe like a juggler. You play all these at once, and even though your opponent is likely to have an answer for one, maybe two of them, well, you probably won't have an answer for three. And uh, of course, you only do that against like a mage, uh, if you know they don't have any cards left in hand, or if you know, or if you've played into a flame strike already earlier in the game. So, you know, there is a lot of strategy that goes into it, but the point is, this card is uniquely, not necessarily amazing, but uniquely awesome because you literally steal wins. Like, you just, you just have to understand the positions in the game where it's very likely for it to work out because when this card works out, you're going to beat the shit out of your opponent. And uh, overall, the card um, is one of my favorite ones uh, out of GVG. One, because it's, it's kind of a poor card uh, unless you play it very strategically, or I guess if you're very, very lucky, but usually it's, it's that first one. Uh, and two, it's kind of put Shaman on the map and constructed, and uh, it was, you know, Shaman has really been dipping down in um, how, how frequently it's being played, so I think this card and maybe Power Mace really work together to push out the mech Shaman deck to really fill the, 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 the void that sometimes is in Constructed of class variety. So overall, excellent stuff. Oh, and of course, the Wii sounds and the zappy zappy and the laser beams. It's just awesome. It's just an awesome little robot card. And uh, again, I'm going to show you guys uh, mostly some of the games I've had in today's arena run. Uh, this arena run is actually ongoing because the servers went down, but uh, at the time of me stopping the deck was 11 and 0. And I don't think this is the type of deck that you'd expect to get 12 wins with in general. So you guys will see just, just how much of a sneaky little asshole this guy is to steal those wins from significantly better decks in a seemingly unfair way. Enjoy the clips, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Crossbolt. This is the all-in play. Basically, I hope he doesn't have another board clear. I believe he would have played a flame strike if he had one last time, but again, at two and two, you, it's hard to predict players. He's had two draws, so he's had two chances to draw another board clear, but again, this guy's two and two. How many board clears could he possibly have in the deck? The answer is two so far. Bomber bro after. Kodo, not, not the doggy, not the doggy. Good. Holy shit.
How much damage is that? Okay, that's, go that's going double face. Ah, oh, I just got a legendary from the little spider. Mook. I think so. No backstab is basically I win, so I, I'll just go for it. I think this deck is really bad against Rogue. Damn, too bad. Best play here is a Perdition's Blade. This is awful. Well, look at the hand. Is there any other play I could make? Hmm. So he has Shattered Sun. Okay, I guess we'll go for it. so dumb sometimes. Yeah, that's still Shattered Sun, by the way. It doesn't change. You can't heal bot. This is turn four. I went second. Yeah, if he has a heal bot, he'll be fine. Do I realize I'm a complete sellout? Yeah, I realized it earlier. When I told people I was using Logitech webcam for like four years now, and now that I'm on TSM and TSM is sponsored by Logitech, because I mentioned that I used the Logitech webcam when asked, I realized how much of a sellout I really am. Thank you for showing me the truth, guys. This guy's toast. Uh, I might lose this one. Elements guide me. He needs the heal. What a stupid game. Oh my god. Oh, 
Get in there and fight, maggot! Get in there and fight, maggot! Well played. Easy game. Esports boys. Your magic shall not see. I think we just won the game. Contract 12-0 arena speed run. But this game's not gonna last very long. One way or another, someone's going down really quickly. Huffernoot started an arena with 10 wins already. Sounds like you queued up without 10-0, my friend. Oh my god. Oh my god, no way, how is this happening, three games in a row? Whoa, he has no answer! Ah oh, shit, I get wiped out now. It's all right. We got we got a nice life lead here. Okay, that was a really good answer, though. If he has a deadly shot, mm, 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 he could still win this. Bomb lobber. Oh, Kodo. If we get Deadly Shot, we'll actually lose this game. Because 16 damage is still a lot to do. Oh. That's nice of him. Savannah Hymen, I raise you War Golem. Might be dead. Get in there and fight, maggot. Okay. Pass me that arc light banner. Okay, I need one damage. One damage. Let's go, one damage, one damage. Give me the damage, give me the damage. Eh, 
That's pretty good. you do a little bit better. No, he gave up. Oh no, we're dead rid of the kill command! Well played. Oh my god. That almost happened. <laughs> 